Why would you need a massive 3D printer? Well, if someone asked me that a few months back, I would have said to print really fun, huge models. Like this massive banana, but also a magic wand. And when any cubic reached out to us to test their frankly outrageously sized bed slinger, that's exactly what I did for the first few weeks. But little did I know that this machine was about to change the way we work forever. So let's start from the beginning. We have a lot of 3D printers, from Bamboo Labs and Prusas all the way to the smaller Anchor Mate, the tiny Prusa Mini, and this even smaller Easy 3 X1. But the biggest we've ever used is our Chidi X Max 3, which comes in a pretty respectable 325, 325, 315 build volume. And at that size, I genuinely thought anything bigger was just a waste of space in our already overcrowded workshop. But for some reason, whenever there's an opportunity to get something even bigger, I just can't say no, purely out of curiosity. So here we are. And as you probably guessed, Anycubic did send us this for free, but they wouldn't give us any hard cash. So everything you're going to hear is our unbiased opinion. Oh my goodness. Oh. And to be honest, this review is probably costing us money, so this video is going to be sponsored by us. So if you want to support us or print any of our designs, check out our Patreon in the description down here. Now the Cobra 2 Max was our first experience with anything from any cubic, so the fact that the out the box experience was so good from a quality point of view was really promising. And things only got better with the assembly. It all felt well made, well planned out, the instructions were super super simple to follow and it didn't even take that long. Especially considering I stupidly decided to assemble it in the corner of our studio that was basically the same size as the printer is. And despite me constantly underestimating the size of this thing, setting it up ready to put a print on was a real treat. Because just like a ton of top end printers these days, you just load in some filament, hit a few buttons and it basically does everything for you. Namely auto leveling using the upgraded Levy Q2 system across 49 points on the bread. Which if you're just getting into 3D printing recently, you might not appreciate how much of a win that actually is. Because you will have completely missed the days of manually leveling beds and calibrating nozzle distances with a piece of blooming paper. This is normally the point in a review where I'm supposed to insert some chat about how quick it prints a tiny little boat. And that's due to the print speed, which is probably some ridiculously high number. Something about having not one, but dual synchronized Z-axis motors for print stability. And it's probably even got a direct drive extruder with a filament sensor. But we don't really care about any of that at all. In fact, all I care about is how well it prints stuff. And when I say stuff, I mean unnecessarily big stuff. exactly what you're thinking, that's a lot of plastic you're burning through for some pretty useless stuff. And you're right. In fact, that's actually the exact realization I had when I was chucking all these empty spools in the recycling. So we just kind of stopped doing it. And the printer just dropped into rotation with our others, just making small prototypes and some functional bits for my house. At this point, I was printing stuff this size on a bed that was about 50 times bigger. So my mind was made up, fantastic printer, but if I was to buy one, it would be the much smaller Cobra 2 Pro. But well, I was just completely wrong. See, a few days later, we had decided to finally finish our workshop, which first off needed some more filament storage. Something I've been printing these amazing little brackets from printables for on our bamboo lab, which was literally taking me days because I'd have to set my print off in the morning that would only fit one bracket on, then disappear for eight hours of the day, come back to the workshop with just a single bracket printed in a whole eight hours, and then start the whole thing off again overnight, again for one single bracket. So in 24 hours, that would be two brackets and one $1,500 printer completely out of action. And this is where the Cobra 2 Max played its party piece. Because of its size, it could fit four brackets on at a time, meaning I could just set it off in the morning and by the time I got back, it had output four times the amount of work that I could get on my other printers in exactly the same amount of time. Once my stupid brain had realized this, I couldn't actually believe the time this was saving us. Because overnight, I'd also been printing these Polymaker spool rings to go on our latest haul of filament. But again, I could only do one a night, meaning I was wasting a potential six hours extra print time while I was asleep. 
sleep. But the Cobra Max could again easily fit four rings on there, absolutely maximizing print time and reducing any idle time. Now imagine you run an Etsy shop, for example, or maybe you already do and you have a ton of orders to fulfill for this capsule, which you make around $10 profit from. You load up your standard size printer for an overnight print and you can only do one, meaning in eight hours sleep, you get one product and $10 profit. Now using the Cobra 2 Max, you can fit four times the amount on overnight, meaning you've potentially made $40 profit whilst you're asleep instead of 10. So just on that principle alone, having a large format printer, if you have room for it, has sort of become a no brainer for us. It's actually saving us hours of idle time to the point we changed our workflow to actually try and print all our prototypes overnight which all fit on one tray and are usually done by the morning but would i buy the cobra 2 max as that large option ultimately yes i would but there are some important things to consider the overall print quality and reliability has been good for us, considering for the size you're getting, this is basically an entry-level price printer. And whilst you should never expect the same reliability as you'd get on a much more expensive printer, we were fairly impressed. I will say we did find that printing at standard or stable mode was essential for good quality, which basically slows down the print speeds a bit. Like most printers, the 500mm per second 17-minute bench sheet is slapped on the advertising, but very few can actually pull off any good results at that speed. And as with most printers, there are some annoying little bits that got to us. And annoyingly, they are the usual suspects, like this filament holder on the side is just rubbish. It's in the way, it gets tangled with the cables, and in the end I just took it off and used this free standing holder I had in a cupboard. And the slicer isn't brilliant either. It does have a nice user interface and all the usual settings are available to change, but it feels a little unfinished. There are no presets for filament other than PLA as standard, and even their own PLA doesn't have all the settings configured so it doesn't tell you how much you're actually gonna use per model. And although the app has some great features like reprint, progress stats, speed presets, etc., these are completely missing from the slicer itself. You can just see that the printer is busy and nothing else. Again, this seems to be a bit of a theme with a lot of printer companies now where the slicer feels rushed out, when actually it's one of the most important parts of the whole setup, especially as I couldn't find the Cobra Max 2 presets on any of the other slicers we use. But, and it's a big but, despite those few little annoying negatives, I still find it hard to believe that these days for just over $500, you can get your hands on a printer that has auto leveling, remote printing with an app interface, is as fast as most of us on the market, is easily big enough for 99% of your projects, and as we found can actually end up increasing your income purely due to output capacity. So if you're like us and you've been sat on the fence for a long time about getting a large format printer, hopefully this has helped you make a decision either way. And if you do decide to get one, I would recommend considering the Cobra Max 2 based on our experiences. And if you've actually got the Cobra Max 2 or any of its smaller siblings, don't forget to let us know what you think of them in the comments below and hit subscribe on the way.